So you are one second slower than your competition and you want to find that lap time with setup changes. Or your car is terribly under steering or over steering and you think the setup changes can fix it. Relying on setup to solve balance problems can be dangerous to your driving technique because it can solidify even more your bad habits. Let me tell you a story. A top 1% iRacing driver with 7000 i rating approached me looking for high level coaching with focus on setup changes. We started the session driving the Porsche 911 cup car at Brands Hatch in iRacing. To warm up, we went both on track and did some laps. After around 10 minutes of lapping, I did a 124.9 and he did a 126.1 with the baseline setup, no changes at all. At this point, I knew there was a good point to be made about the relation between driving changes and setup changes. I then asked him what he felt about the car. He said it would not turn, it was understeering. And I agreed with him, it was indeed. But more specifically, the car was still drivable and with the right right driving style, we could get a nice neutral steer towards oversteer on exit where all four tires are working and the car is sliding just right. So it was understeer on entry and oversteer on exit. Before making any changes to the setup, I figured it would be a lot more productive to try to minimize the time differences between his lap and my lap since we were using the same setup. And here's the catch. Instead of making a setup change to make the car rotate more, I instructed him to induce more rotation using driving technique. After looking a little bit to the replays and telemetry, we identified that he was turning in way too fast, something he would do naturally because of his experience with cars in real life and Formula 3 cars in iRacing. Light and high downforce cars accept, sometimes even require, this quicker initial turn in to reach maximum usage of the four tires right away, but heavy and low downforce cars are not forgiven by inertia, and the front tires need some time to start moving all the weight around. This is what I call exponential steering versus linear steering but this is a topic for a different video. So what happened is he actually found more grip in the front tires through a driving style that was more fit to that car. He found 8 tenths of a second in his lap time, going down from a 26.1 to a 25.3. No setup change was done. Only now it was time to change the setup and give the car the front grip we felt we needed on the beginning of the coaching session. We decreased the anti roll bar stiffness on the front of the car and we went back on track. The car immediately turned much more easily on corner entry. His reaction was positive right away. Using the technique we worked on, he was able to make the car turn as much as he wanted on entry, even over sheer, which is quite rare in this car under braking because of its nature but his lap times did not improve. The problem is that this extra rotation on entry was overheating the rear tires a little bit and then the car had overall less traction at the very end of the corner, which made it actually slower. He did not improve his 25.3 with a setup that felt better. The under series setup was still drivable and he was doing a great job inducing more and more rotation with driving technique and the car was planted and rotated nicely on the exit with aggressive throttle application while keeping good traction. And this is where the most important lesson of our session emerged. Make changes to the setup that will make the car faster. A setup that feels better won't necessarily do faster lap times because the overall balance of the car, in terms of rotation, does not guarantee that you will actually carry more speed into the corner. It is incredibly important to look at data and have a lap time delta when trying new setup changes, to make sure that it not only feels better, but actually makes you gain time. Mind that we are focusing on hot lapping and finding lap times in this example. Other situations, like preparing the car for a long endurance event, might make sense when changing the setup to make it feel better, more predictable, and easier to make less mistakes if you're going to be on track for long hours. The second important point of this lesson is that you don't necessarily have to make setup changes to make the car rotate more or less. Driving adjustments might have an even bigger impact sometimes in the way the car behaves. A complete race car driver should be able to make an understeer car rotate more, even oversteer, and an oversteer car rotate less, even understeer, with the right braking, downshifting, brake release, steering and throttle application. Try your best to make the car behave like you want with driving adjustments before making changes to the setup. This order of priority will save you a lot of time and will help you improve your driving technique much, much more efficiently. 
By the way, you might be losing a lot of time if you're not applying these 5 tips that I talk about in this video. Since you stayed until the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a discount coupon to the Motor Racing Checklist, my online course that teaches so much more that you cannot even imagine. If this video inspired you to go practice more, subscribe to this channel and I will be posting a lot more videos with more technique tips in the next few days. See ya!